Good morning, folks. As we've seen on the JPL orbital diagram, Mars and Jupiter are currently conjoined. If you can get outside just before sunrise or even as the light begins intruding the eastern heavens, you should catch the two shining together in the sky. Folks, it's been a while since our last significant geocentric conjunction, longer since it matched a corona hole on the equator, and if you will remember from yesterday, I can't claim to have seen all Earth's magnetic connectivity within a corona hole before. Folks, the last two months have settled for sporadic watches based mostly on coronal holes, but now this combination has given us the 6.5 in New Zealand. A 5.9 in China, which they claim was a 6.6, caused a lot of damage, and the aftershocks are continuing. We took a five-pointer at the South Shetland Islands. Largest New Zealand aftershock so far is 4.9, and we're back on the horse this morning with a six-pointer south of Africa, and the watch continues. Folks, I hate to complain about the HARP data still missing, but there needs to be some clarification as to what's going on. First, the whole of Alaska.edu is down. All of it. Second, there is currently zero activity at HARP right now. The Alaska Dispatch asks if it will come back online, and you better bet it will. Just as Hippus led the way to HARP, the Air Force work there led the way for smaller localized weather modification, the real bad guys in today's game. It has been in the hands of private contractors for years, sometimes running DARPA-funded projects or other USAPs that have little or nothing to do with the original HARP other than using their same facility. You better believe they will find another contractor if they haven't done so already, and that the facility will be back up and running. As a side note, I keep my videos short so that you can easily have time to explore other stuff on YouTube just like this. Lots of channels and blogs following it, but I caution you against joining a droning chorus blaming a dinosaur government program. Perhaps now it is clear just how we need to reevaluate blame for weather modification. Maybe actually do something about bringing the real actors out from the shadows. They've been hiding behind the heart name and you screaming it for far too long. Now cometh the climate liars. Deep breath. The official word on energy from space is that the solar variability is less than 1% over this whole period. First, this is not the magnetic fields fading or the flaring in CME measurements. This is simply the irradiance and the 11-year cycle. However... I know about 112,000 people who are aware that NASA claims our magnetosphere is at least 10% weaker than it was at the left side of this chart. Same amount might be coming at us, which they show here, but we're blocking a lot less now. This dissonance between government knowledge is unacceptable, especially when no factoring is also made for the magnetospheric weakening in terms of increased cosmic radiation taken in on the night there side. There has been some major flooding in the western United States to match the east from the Gulf up to Toronto. Utah, New Mexico, Arizona have been hammered and there may be more coming tonight. The Atlantic was supposed to be the hurricane maker this summer, but we see yet another low developing in the eastern Pacific south of Mexico. There is no development in the Atlantic, the western Pacific, or the Indian Ocean. The low spanning Melbourne to New Zealand is weakening between the islands, while Perth welcomes the next convergence tonight. You see the convergence lines in Europe, one entering from the Atlantic and one exiting to Russia. On a pressure map, it looks like two blue blobs of low pressure in the northern hemisphere. These draw counterclockwise for their convergence, and the Mediterranean still popping as well. West coast of the U.S. might see a change as that clearing cell is moving out to sea, moving west allowing moisture in to meet the coastline. Primary pressure cell is a low on the Canadian border, drawing lots of energy north, but mixing it with cooler masses moving southeast as the day goes on, setting the severe watch zones this evening. If you get outside at sunset, you won't have the constellation labels up there, but Ophiuchus would be rising just south of the celestial equator. Who cares? The Sonoma Gamma Ray Burst chart indicates we just took another one hours ago from there. Solar wind speed shows minor density increase. All indices within norm in that two-hour empty period during the satellite maneuver was captured by SOHO solar wind data, confirming a non-issue minor density increase. Flaring? Still sad, earth-facing spots lost complexity last night with fading umbers atop the leading spot in the north, and the delta completely gone down south, leaving only positive blue at the lead. However, the backside did what it's done for this two-year Earth-facing quiet. It let loose, this one going right at Stereo A and a bit to the north, coming to the side for Stereo B's vantage of the eruption heading away from our planet. As you watch the eruption leave behind a plasma filament dancing on the north, you can see why Stereo is important, because eruptions headed away from Earth and those headed right at Earth are tough to otherwise distinguish using the SOHO vantage point from geosynchronous orbit. Quake factors remain, 
plasma filament directly earth facing today. Eyes open. No fear at 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.